Good morning, everybody, once again. John and Bogdan here from Houston, from uh, Studio 314 here in Silver Sea Studios, and you are at the home. And from Huntsville, Texas. Yeah, look at that. And the cat are hanging out. It's like, uh, what, uh, an hour away from Houston, Huntsville. An hour north of Houston. But uh, we are here with a new edition. I believe this is a 25th edition of Art Chat. Yeah, I know, 25th weeks. Not not an easy thing if you, if you think about it. That's just this year? Yes. And this is only, what, uh, June. But anyway, um, let's start the art chat. You want to do some um, housekeeping before we start uh, the actual show? We do. I'd like to welcome Leo. Good morning. Hi, Leo. Uh, the uh, Let's see. Yes, a uh, couple of things for housekeeping. First of all, uh, everything that we're showing you today is for sale. Uh, one of the reasons we do art chat is so that Bogdan and I can kind of feature our, our inventory and what we're doing. Uh, so not only what we're doing, uh, oh, more, more about our art product rather than just about the art business, which we do some other content on. And that's because we produce a lot of... Uh, we do. We do produce a lot of stuff. And we produce a lot of art. And so this is a way to talk about the art bit. And uh, so that, and, and if the time to buy a piece of art is when you fall in love with it. If you see a piece you absolutely have to have, we can get it to you wherever it is in the world. In fact, we were just doing some scouting on getting some artwork to Poland. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. But uh, yeah, we can get it to you wherever you are. Fabulous. So uh, saying that, I think we should uh, switch to the slideshow and see what else is prepared here as look at that the first pieces of art we uh, want to feature in today's shows are uh, one of mine it's called letters from home and it's actually a critical wood and yours is ernesto ernesto waits hey let's talk about mine it just came uh, out from uh, basically nowhere i was exploring with some of uh, old papers and old letters and all envelopes found I actually in your uh, grandmother's box, whatever it's, uh, was left in the family, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, old newspapers, old stuff that it's unusable. And I thought, how can I creatively play with it? So it started on this piece of wood. This is like actually my first piece, I believe. And uh, I said, what if I try to uh, how do you call that uh, proce process when you want to collage not collage but I wanted to actually start it as a newspaper old newspaper I wanted the the words um, on the actual board you know like you put it upside down oh a transfer a transfer I'm sorry I couldn't find the word and uh, but I was playing with transfer, which is fine. Some some of these corners of the of this piece, uh, you will see some transfer uh, uh, words and the lines of the newspapers. But then I realized actually I liked I liked the the paper actually on the actual paper on on the actual canvas. So this is uh, I, I start playing with these ideas and uh, using all kinds of. Uh, paper, letters, uh, handwriting, letters, envelopes, and uh, 1930, 1940s stuff. Uh, and this is how actually Letters from Home uh, was uh, born. And these are letters from your grandmother uh, through her husband, first husband at the time. And uh, he was in New York doing all kinds of businesses and he is writing back. It's a quite a communication going on there. Of course, I saved uh, all these funny communications for, for the family history, but whatever was kind of an unusable, I, I wanted to preserve and I wanted to, you know, uh, uh, create a piece of art out of it. Yeah, and there are things that, uh, you know, are just kind of nonsensical because you don't know the people involved. and. Uh, I have this piece in, uh, I brought this piece in the studio because I, I created it at home 
and then um, I displayed here. Uh, I didn't know what to to think about it, but it has been here for two weeks now, and it's not in a, a great spot in the studio. No, I but uh, a lot of people kind of had a reaction to it when they see it. I think it's a little brighter in reality than, uh, than in this picture. I find it stunning. I think it's one of the best things you've done. Uh, I find it absolutely stunning. It's got depth, it's got interest, it's got, like you say, those little bits of, those little surprises. It has texture, the colors are great. Uh, it's got movement, which I always love in an abstract piece. Uh, congratulations! I think it's I think it's a, a stunning piece, and it's um, you know uh, I, I determined myself to 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 create a series of this, and I have several pieces pieces already done, and uh, what I wanted to 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 stay focused on is I I, I picked up the colors uh, the uh, and I'm gonna say I said I'm, uh, don't bring anything else. Uh -huh. into this palette just stick with these colors and see where it where it takes you so this is how um, those pieces were built stunning stunning work and you have a number of these that are, are similar yeah uh, yes i mean they they, they are they, uh -oh. they they are made to create a series and so on the end of the day uh they should have similar elements and similar colors going through the uh, the whole series yeah, do you have it to show? Uh, what other other pieces? The actual piece that the... oh, actual the actual piece is right behind me. Uh, thank you for saying that. I always forget to to show this on camera, even though uh, most, of the, most of the time they are around me. It gives you so, perspective and things. It's a nice nice size. You see, it's and all wood. I know it started, it started as an experiment, but I, I liked it and it started on a piece of wood, literally. Yeah. And it can be hanged as is, and it actually can be framed as well, if you want more depth to it. Right. I just, I think it's stunning. The colors are amazing. But it's I, such a, I hope you do a lot more of those. It's such an unusual size. You can, you know, have it uh, like I, I did a, a mock-up here. Uh, in a very um, uh, strip of wall somewhere, just right. for an accent. It looks lovely, but it looks fine without it as well. Fabulous. So you want to talk about Ernesto waiting. Let's see what Ernesto waits for. Ernesto was uh, the first uh, large head I attempted. I uh, had been doing just a little five by sevens and something told me I needed to do something bigger. And I had a large canvas and said, let me try. So uh, I, I don't know what I like more. I, I just, I love things about Ernesto. I love his hair. I love, I love the wallpaper behind him. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried to kind of antique it a bit. And I think that adds some mystery and some, makes it look like it's uh, kind of vintage or somehow more mysterious, but uh, Ernesto is just hanging out waiting, and uh, I found him really fascinating. I, I just can't stop doing the little heads, and uh, recently I sold one at the Bella Boteca, uh, one of the prints, and I sold a couple of prints in Dallas. And and I was I was talking to the lady who purchased it, and I was like, what if this becomes my thing to do little faces? Uh, I don't mind that. It just never was even in my, on my radar that that would become kind of a thing for me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think he's a nice size. It's a bigger. It's a big canvas, um, and uh, Ernesto just staring off, waiting. Uh, and I think, I think it's, it's. I think it's great. I, mean, I love. I love everything about it. Vintage room, probably sitting, waiting to be called. Um, I don't know what his story is. We could, we could figure it out. I'm sure. But look, you know, if you have a kind of a beige kind of sort of house or interior, look how that a, 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 a picture like that in these colors pop out, you know, and brings some energy into that room. I have I've had a number of people really comment if it's got the green background, and I do quite a lot of them with green backgrounds. Uh, people seem to really react to them more. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do more with green backgrounds. Yeah. Um, 
And if you, yeah, I like the wallpaper as well. If you can come up with photo. some vintage ideas of wallpaper, uh, why not? You know, and we've got some vintage wallpaper, I believe, um, that we have here at the house. Um, one of the things about Ernesto in this this particular photo doesn't read well. It, it, it's it's got some lines in it or something. Those don't yeah, appear. Yeah. So this is a mock-up somehow. I don't know why it's showing that way. The painting is actually behind you if you want to grab it. Yeah. Get it up, up closer. Um, oh, it's got some plastic around to protect the corners. I just brought it from storage. Okay, it's ready to be shipped, guys. Ready, ready to go. Purchased. <laughs> so yeah, you can see those lines don't appear. That, that's just something in the photograph. I need to probably re reshoot it. But uh, he's got some gold, uh, some kind of antiquing going on. And he's just a big old head of a guy waiting. I love his hair. Okay, John. Take me <laughs> home. Take me home. Okay. That's cute. So let me put it back and we'll continue the show. Yeah, it's, it's a nice piece. Yeah, I think so. And I like that uh, it has this uh, uh, skin that it's um, it's not white, it's not black, it's uh, kind of a creole kind of, in a way. Kind of an olive skin. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I want to always say about my little heads is I realize they're not great drawings, technically. <laughs> yeah. I want you to know that I do know that. I do this on purpose, uh, trying to, uh, to create these little cartoon heads. Yeah, these are not... Uh, cartoon heads real life right they're not meant to be good drawings but they are great now uh, guys uh, if you haven't made it yet uh, at Silver Sea Studios here in Houston we still have uh, the show progress uh, up to the end of this week so you have time to browse and uh, look uh, on the hallway, the main hallway, to see what these artists in uh, Silver Sea Studios come up with. And in what's fact, new. Give, let me give a shout out to Gretchen, who's just joined us. Gretchen has some lovely work in the show as well. I wonder if I have it here. Probably not, because I just got some random shots the other day. Yeah. And those are yours right here on the right. I can see them. Orion's belt. Yeah, it's a beautiful show. It's a beautiful space. If you guys <laughs> don't right have them. I'm sorry? There's Gretchen's snakes right there in the middle on the pedestal. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. And then um, we'll have another show uh, when? Uh, it actually starts this weekend. Uh, we, uh, we are going to take down the art on the 25th and on the 27th we put out new art. So uh, it comes up pretty much right away. We had this period of time during the summer before PhotoFest comes in, and PhotoFest will be here uh, taking over all, the, the, uh, all of the display areas uh, with their exhibitions until the end of the year. And so we wanted to get in a couple of shows this summer. So they're shorter shows. Uh, the next one is called Arrival, and we have another guest curator, Alton Delaney, who's kind of a celebrity. He's and on Wendy Williams, how do you beat that? Uh, but anyway, he is actually curating the uh, uh, airport collections and the airport has quite a huge art collection, both airports. And uh, he is the, the one who's curating that. So he's kind of a local celebrity, great artist himself. And he will be curating for us the next show, which is called Arrival. And so we'll talk about that next week once we get that all sorted. And just a reminder for everybody that we have a new studio here at Silver Sea Studio. It's still new, even though we moved here about three weeks ago. Um, we're still moving stuff around. We have a lot to do. And uh, because this is how it happens when you compress two artists in one space, uh, it's coming with adjustments and uh, the gallery looks beautiful. The, the studio looks beautiful and it's ready for uh, more visitors. And it's a great spot. I mean, we are right inside the main entrance. So uh, what used to be door one, which is now door yellow, uh, I think they're gonna put a one on it eventually. But uh, it is the first studio you hit when you walk in the, in the mm -hmm. building, uh, if you come in the main entrance. 
So yeah, it's a great spot as well. So hopefully that'll mean more traffic. So far it has already meant more traffic. What news do we have? Well, I've, I've been uh, again invited as guest artist at Festival de Fotografia Artistica in Tucumán. And uh, this year I chose to present uh, Nature Remember series that have been, uh, that hasn't been yet uh, displayed anywhere or shown. And um, even though I was invited to be physically presented there, I cannot afford that at this time. Uh, we, yeah, we, yeah. Uh, there's some weird, uh, weird times going on. So this is going to be a terrible year. And um, but uh, I got in touch with the uh, organizer. I told them that uh, it's not possible uh, for me to be present there, and they said. Uh, We'll be glad to have your work displayed digitally on a screen. Uh, can you do a video about it? So um, guess what? I'm going to do a video about this uh, series that will be uh, play in a loop uh, in one of those venues over there. What surprises? Surprises. Look at this. Absolutely. Going back to Tucumán, I still yeah. think quite a quite an honor for you to be asked this is the third year that they've asked you to participate mm -hmm. and this particular series is amazing they talk about the the theme of it is resilience and the whole idea that uh, behind this series is kind of a a nod toward conservation and protecting the environment and that is resilient uh, through all of all of the things we're throwing at the planet so I, I think it's a good fit. I think it's a great collection. And again, not been shown before. So hopefully it'll get some attention. I mean, I would have loved to go, but it's next to impossible at this time. And uh, plus, uh, if you go, you will have to have all the series printed and framed. And uh, there's no way I can do that from over here. You know, it's, it's just too much. But moving forward, we have two new surprises coming from the other art fair in Dallas. Uh, they have made what a, um, a curatorial selection. I call them to show. And uh, we ended up with these two pieces: John's his blue memories and madness anticipation. A look at the similarities, John. Uh, it's like All these together. They they're identical. I think the curator loved the blues, I guess. I think she liked the blue. I mean, she didn't know that uh, we are together in this. So I was like, man, that is like a detail of the wall. Isn't that funny? I never I never saw those two pieces together. They're, they're perfect together. Perfect. Uh, a little creepy. No, but it's quite an honor. <laughs> the, the, the show was uh, back in May and we went to Dallas and then uh, Dal the other art fairs run by Sachi Art. And so Sachi uh, keeps our artwork uh, online and and features it uh, as part of the the show and afterwards as uh, and and they did a, a selection of art for their best of show uh, and we were included. I think that's great. So let's see what else is new. What have we worked these last past days? I've been doing a lot of client work and uh, try to keep creative on a personal level as well so uh, you asked me earlier if i have other pieces on that collection well this is a new one i just finished and that uh, a letter mixed media and this is gonna i think it's 30 by 30. i can't remember exactly but in, yes it's 30 by 30. and um, it's exactly the same i i combine old newspaper letters handwritten letters with uh, this time actually words that i could you know a lot of those letters are written on pencils <clears throat> and pencils have been <clears throat> kind of uh, washed out because of the so much time and whatever they move the papers here and there just like disappear so i i i took a little passages that I could make up and I, I wrote over the, the canvas. I think it, I think it looks great. So you wrote this on top of the paint? Yes. Uh huh. Very interesting. Yeah. So you could, I mean, a viewer can can go and read, even though they're like just 
floating words uh, inspired from these letters, you can read them, but you know, it is not necessary to read it. That, that's not the point of it. It's not about the message of the words, yeah. And what, uh, last week, the, or the last, or the end oh. of last two weeks, uh-huh, go ahead. Is this on wood as well? This is on canvas. This is on canvas. And toward the last week, I finished a new piece of this structural that have been on my table for some time now. And I tried new backgrounds this time, and I think I love how that showed up a little more uh, simple than before. I didn't um, use a lot of cracking and a lot of colors. Uh, I think it's just, uh, this is acrylic and um, the blues on top, it's actually uh, blue ink. Blue ink. Mm-hmm. And you know, we have often said that when you take a photo of these 3D things that they uh-huh. come out, this does not look flat. It looks totally three-dimensional. Mm-hmm. That that plant, in fact, looks re- real. It feels like I could reach out and touch it. Mm-hmm. No, I think it, uh, it really uh, shone beautifully. And what a great way to, to mix the idea of photography and, and sculptural uh, and, and fine art in a different way than photography, just to reimagine <laughs> photography. I just think that's great. And I have so much, so many architectural elements um, unused because for a long time, you know, I just took photographs because I love them, but I didn't have a clear path where this is gonna go. So now I'm going back and, and look for this, uh, uh, columns and walls, and, I, I, and now I'm playing them uh, completely differently. Now this one is not frame. Is that something you intended? This is not frame. It's it's intended to be frame. Um, I, it in, somebody said, no, I want it this way. And I said, listen, um, I don't know you, are you going to uh, display uh, this piece in your home. It could be close to a kitchen. And this is, this is acrylic, but the actual image is paper it's fine art paper and i don't want you know the paper to be destroyed in time with all kinds of grease and smoke and you know dust be so so easy because it's three-dimensional it's it's if you lift it off the background this is paper and it would be so easy to bump up against it crease it Uh, but i mean the paper is very resistant it's cotton based it has a like 320 grams it's it's very thick and it's very um it has an elasticity to it. However, it's paper. It's paper. And uh, the first the first reaction of the majority of people that comes in the studio and see these pieces is to touch them. And, yes. you know, I don't want them to do that. But moving forward, you can touch this one and nothing's going to happen. Ah. This is uh, my new florals, guys. I'm uh, uh, when I'm stepping out of the ruins and I want something fresh, then I'm envisioning this flower euphoria going on. So this is a new piece um, that hasn't have a name yet. Uh, I just got in the studio today and uh, it reminds me of uh, kind of the end of spring, beginning of summer flowers um, in, in the mist, basically. You can see lots of white drops and uh, lots of white lines and those are kind of you, you know when you when you look in the morning on the uh, uh, reflection of the sun you can see the the bubble mists on, on uh, spider web uh, so that was the idea of it yeah no i think the the colors are amazing uh i, I this is very similar to the one you did before which had lilies in it I yeah. don't quite recognize the flowers. They look a little bit like the little shop of horrors. I wait. I, I yeah. I, I recognize the flowers. However, I don't know how to call them. Yeah. Um, I've seen them before because uh, they, they're in my mind for a long time. They don't have to be real flowers. They can. They be don't made. have to be real flowers. That's the beauty of it. But uh, I love the depth of it. The colors. I love the movement. It's it's. And, and you have the kind of splatter going on and little things are around the, the bouquet, if you will. Right. And I get and the sense that it's buzzing with insects and, and it's just a, a real summer picture. And I didn't want to cover the entire canvas with paint. It's, yeah. like, it's like a fraction 
of the nature right here, you know? But you've been busy too, right? I have, and I, this is one, I, I don't know, I thought we talked about this one before. This is a new one of mine called Chatter. That's okay, I always like to, to hear over and over again the story. And it's so funny because we're both using lots and lots of words. I put a lot of words at the back of the painting. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are done in colored pencil as well as, well as some, uh, some regular pencil, uh, some graphite as well. So there are actual messages in there that, again, are not meant to be read. Some of them you can make out. Um, I think the one at the top says like, what do I do next? <laughs> but again, I wanted to, to capture the idea that there is a, to me, there's a real beauty. There's a real language in, in, in visual imagery. So even though we don't recognize, uh, I, I don't know, logically, into, uh, consciously uh, we get certain messages from color and shape and things like that and so I, I put that kind of I, I like mixing the idea of written language with the visual language of art and so uh, that's what I've done here I really wanted to explore the colors I wanted some translucence I still love the idea of having what looks like a light source within the painting mm. uh, not not as as kind of a setting sun but kind of a, a a glow in fact i even bought some glow in the dark paint which i haven't experimented with yet that will be coming soon i think it looks great and um it's a nice big piece too it's well, not several, several people who saw this last weekend and uh, they loved it and they, uh, they look at it yeah it's, it's a good piece i'm proud of it and you have some merchandise going on huh we do. You know, we're almost out of time. Almost. But uh, again, I want to tell everybody that we do have some merchandise, not a lot, in the studio. And actually, you can get this one from uh, uh, Society6. Or you can buy these from the shop. I don't put much profit on them. Again, we want to, uh, it's that time before we move forward to thank everybody that is watching us, that is supporting us, that um, love what we're doing. And a special thank you goes to Jen and Katie, Yay. who uh, wow. last week stopped by and got two of your paintings back to Arkansas. Ah, back to Arkansas. Thank you guys so much. They're going to send me a picture of what they look like when they get them installed in their new home. Thank you so, so much. Excellent. Now, uh, the second part of the show, I, I chose uh, one on paper, which is a mix, it's an acrylic actually on paper. And this is a collaboration, the next one. Yep. So let's talk about this very quickly. It's uh, It started, you know, uh, like any other project. Uh, I I love the, the, the Cosmos idea and I, I, I work on that uh, for quite a while in creating this, um, how do you call that? Uh, I imagine all kinds of things that that are related to the cosmos and what happens there. And this, uh, I have new works on paper uh, based on that idea. And um, I call them, uh, all of them have name uh, from a cosmology uh, terminology, if you want. And uh, this is precession, and we had a conversation with, I kind of conversation with John with you earlier. Why precession? I was like, this is what I thought the 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 macro uh, <laughs> a visual would look like on this precession. And precession it has to do with what uh, 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 a changing in the axis caused by the gravitational influence of the sun. It's Amen. pretty. That's all that meant. It has a name and it's pretty. No, and, uh, it's on paper, right? It's on paper and it's very uh, 3D looking. I don't know why this doesn't show yet. It's very, uh, it has a lot of um, texture on top, a lot of colors and uh, you can, um, it has some um, spray pen uh, as well here and there, just because uh, the spray pen has a different pigment in it and yeah. that I can't achieve on acrylic uh media beautiful beautiful piece we it's got less than a minute okay uh, it's okay we're gonna move to the next one which is a collaboration 
yeah, I just wanted to bring this one up again. I think I've shown it before. It's called East Meets West. Bogdan and I did this as part of a collaboration for a, a show over at Winter Street Studios. Uh, it's a, a photograph that he took of a man driving a haystack uh, in Romania. And I thought his culture and my culture. So I painted uh -huh. over. Uh, this is going to be on display in the new show, uh, Arrival. And uh, I just thought it was cute. And I said, oh, we haven't talked about it in a while. So I wanted to bring it up again. It's uh, it's smaller. It's 16 by 20. But the it's 10 30 guys god time flies so fast oh, we got chatty uh, too too chatty but guys thank you for being us uh with, with us today uh we'll see you next <laughs> or we just wednesday gonna... go back to work now okay. yeah I ask bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye everybody have a great week <laughs>